Hello, I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And I'm about to get into every NHL team in the league, where they're going, and what I think they should do. That's right. Every team in the league. Okay, hit the subscribe and the bell, because you get this content all the time. All part of Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Check out that website. Every team in every sport being a being celebrated by podcasters and writers much like me. It's an awesome website. Highly recommend you check it out. You can also check out my show at My NHL Pearls of Wisdom Necklace from or Pearls of Wisdom, my, my NHL Pearls of Wisdom show. The Pearls of Wisdom Necklace is what I send to you in the Pearlocopter if you subscribe right now, right now. Uh, but I do a show from 3 to 5 Eastern, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and from... 7.30 to 9.30 Eastern in the evening, Tuesday and Thursday, sorry, and Friday is, yeah, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday and Thursday, jeez. All right, let's get at her. Uh, every team in the league, what direction they're going and what they're going to do right No. Tampa Bay Lightning. You got to go. Tampa Bay Lightning, they are going to get rid of some cap space, probably giving a pick to uh, Seattle to uh, to uh, get rid of Johnson, who they were trying to get rid of a lot last year, um, even putting him on waivers, give up a pick and a prospect or what have you to lose that contract. Problem is they are out of, they are quite don't have too many picks left, only a third this year. I think they might have a uh, – let's take a look at it. I might, they might have only a second next year, a first. They do have a first next year and only a third this year. Um, may, I think they'll still have to do more than that anyways. Maybe trade Kalorn, uh to get a couple picks to be able to give to uh, Seattle to remove that contract. And then what they'll probably end up doing is crushing it because they still have the best winger in the game, one of the best centers in point in the game, Kucherov, of course, I'm talking about, and the best goaltender in the league in Vasilevsky, not to mention a stacked defense and still a pretty solid uh, forward group, even if you remove those guys. Pittsburgh Penguins, their window is so small. What I think they're going to do this year, uh, what they should do this year, is go out and get the best goaltender they possibly can. If that's Mark andre Fleury, so be it. Hopefully they can get Vegas to retain some money. Um, if that's, say, uh, going to uh, Minnesota and getting Kakin in or somebody like the Talbot, because they're going to lose one of those. Uh, this, at this moment, anyways, they may lose one of those guys to Seattle. Um but they have to get a better goaltender than Jari and then cross their fingers that that uh, core group that's getting older, such as Crosby, Malkin, um, and the gang can uh, hold it together enough to get one more cup in them. I'm not really con- I'm not really sold that that's possible, but you never know. And then it's rebuild time, my friends. Rebuild for possibly a significant amount of time. Although Hextall there in Pittsburgh uh, did some great things in Philadelphia, and if they would have let him keep on going, I think he would have did some great things in Philadelphia. So you never know. Vegas Golden Knights, they are contending again. Their window is, uh, cl- they're on the closing side, but they still, you know, their team is still young enough. In the early 30s, something like that. But they need a number one center. I think they're going to go out and try to find the best center they can um, to be able to uh, help out. Uh, I want to get his name right. Chandler Stevenson. Maybe even trailing, trading Riley Smith to get it. But it was their biggest downfall last year and in the playoffs is they didn't have a good enough center. Here's something for you. We got uh, the Washington Capitals are coming up here right away. Out, um, they've got a Kuznetsov over there that apparently they're not uh, too happy with. 
flurry for Kuznetsov? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, the, the New York Islanders, unbelievably, they, they managed to trade Eberle to Detroit and get a second round pick back for, I don't know, that trade hasn't even, I can't understand that trade. But anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, they just got some cap room. Uh, pretty sure what they're going to do, they're contenders. They're going to go out there and get the best scoring winger they possibly can get because that's about, that's, they definitely need it. Two years in Tampa Bay, losing to Tampa Bay, not being able to score enough. I think now they realize you need to get scoring in that lineup. Um, and it's simple as that. They, they tried to avoid it and just get defensive guys like Pajo, who can score, put up some points, but they don't have a true shooter on that team. And seriously, I when's the last time there was a cup won by a team that didn't have a, at least one true shooter on their team? Uh Washington Capitals, their window is closing big time, big time, about as fast as Pittsburgh's, Pittsburgh's, uh, and maybe not quite as fast. I think if I'm them, again, out there to get the goaltender, and I just said Kuznetsov for Flurry as a possibility. Um, best goaltender they can find. San Jose Sharks. Slowest rebuild you'll probably ever see. Uh, they've got so many overpriced veterans there they can't get rid of. They pretty much just got to keep on missing the playoffs with them and hope that they can draft their way out of this problem. I think that's all they have. And that's probably what they're going to do. I don't know. Wilson, the only other thing you could possibly do, and that's the thing, they have Jones there as their goaltender. And they're just simply, I don't think there's too many teams that are going to make the playoffs was Jones as their number one goaltender. So if there was something they could do, I just like we just talked about with these previous teams, if if you're in situations like this, the best thing to do is get a killer goaltender and you just never know, he can save your day, the save, save the day for you. So that's a possibility. Think of Anderson in Toronto. He was injured. Uh, if they think he can get back to his old form, they might want to take a risk on a guy like that. San Jose might as well take risks because they're not going anywhere anytime soon unless they find something like that. Um, the Toronto Maple Leafs, again, this is like goaltender, 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 goaltender. Yes, they need defense, no doubt about it. They certainly need to add defense somehow with that roster. I've been saying, I said back before they signed Marner, that they should have traded him for a package to bring depth to this organization. Um, that being said, if it wasn't for COVID, they might have had some cap space to do some more things there. But um, I would start off in, if, if you have a thin lineup and you have no cap room to add to it, add goaltending, 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 goaltending. Again, Turcotte, or I uh, uh, just mentioned his name, Talbot in in Minnesota, Flurry in uh, Vegas are the two biggest goaltenders out there that you could probably acquire. I'd be trying to acquire them. Chicago Blackhawks, uh, they're just going to continue this rebuild and do like crazy stuff like getting a third and uh, Caleb Jones from Edmonton for a fifth, for, I almost said a 55 year old Keith. A $5.5 million, 37 year old. Duncan Keith with two years left on his contract in a flat cap world where people don't have any money. You actually got assets for that. Keep on doing stuff like that. Uh, there they get pious suitor who just turns out to be a, you know, a great center for them or a very good center anyways. Um, and uh, they've got Kirby doc they did this rebuild with nobody else knowing, not even Jonathan Tays knew that there was a rebuild happening. Um, and now they're looking like they could be a pretty solid team. They're probably two to three years away as they build that defense especially. But uh, I think they'll just keep the status quo and keep on building like that. Edmonton Oilers, they're supposed to be winning now. But they just keep on making ridiculous moves like Kyle Turris last year. Possibly this Duncan uh, Duncan Keith trade. 
I have I have very little faith. What are they going to do? They're going. What should they do? Well, they shouldn't have did the Duncan Keith trade. They shouldn't have did Turris last year. They they've got to add smart play smart valuable players to their team that are effective. Uh, they need to identify the value of players better than they do. But they're going to keep on adding. They're probably going to add a scoring winger here and go for it. Like David might save them no matter what they do. We'll see. Florida Panthers um, making the brilliant moves that they did, changing the character in that organization, Zito with uh, Hornquist and Verhege, uh and Gudis, bringing uh, a battling attitude to that lineup. It was brilliant, and now I think they'll just try to add as much scoring as they possibly can as it pops up and keep on going for it. Um, the problem is going to be what happens with Bob Roski there. That's going to be the big problem that they have. But Spencer Knight will probably save them for in the short term and the long term anyways. But they're just going to keep on adding what they can, adding what they can, and doing it patiently, I bet. Uh, Cal, uh, Philadelphia Flyers, well, after they fired Hextall, uh, who wanted to be very patient with Carter Hart, and it looks like he was right, and very patient with the roster in general, uh, he was basically looking to do what Chicago was doing, was keeping the veterans but not really telling them that they're kind of rebuilding and just picking draft picks up, draft picks up, draft picks up until they had a team either that the veterans would have to leave or they could use the veterans and become great. Uh, but because they fired them, they just got to go out and get as many players as they can and go for it again and hope that Carter Hart has a good year. That's, that's what I think they're going to do. Uh, they, they are apparently looking at uh, leaving uh, Van Riemsdyk and uh, Ver- Voracek exposed. I doubt very much Seattle picks up either one of those guys uh, unless they give them a pick, which I would. Then they got some cap space, and you never know. Play, bring in a Lion A or something in here. A pure shooter. They need a pure shooter in this lineup. So what, that's what I would do. I would, I would, If I have to staple a pick to Voracek and go out and do a Hail Mary and bring in Lion A, it's probably what I would do here. If it fails, you're rebuilding anyways. Calgary Flames just burn it down. That core didn't work. Goudreau's not going to work. Not working. Uh, Monahan's not working. You got Jordano sitting there. Like I understand they're gonna they're leaving him for Seattle. I don't know if Seattle will take him or not. But I think they finally understand that this is going to be a tear down rebuild, and it's going to be kind of ugly. And the worst part is that the build didn't get very far. It didn't build them into a team that even came close to becoming a contender. Awful. Montreal Canadiens, they're going to do crazy stuff. They lost Weber next year, may not play next year, so they got that cap space. They've offered Dan O $5 million for five years, uh, for six years, and he's waiting to see what the market's going to give him. I don't know what's going to happen with that, but um, they could draw in, might not be coming back. They have that cap space. They probably are not going to give a contract to Tatar. They have that cop cap space. I could see them going after Hamilton. I just mentioned Lion A, uh, Schwartz. Like anybody of significance out there, you can be assured Montreal will be picking up, trying to pick them up and going for it again. Uh, Dallas Stars um, probably would have to stay the way they are. Is that what I, by the way, was that what I would do if I was Montreal? Now, yes. Before with Anderson, even though they made the finals, except for uh, um, I, I probably wouldn't have did that Anderson deal. I would have probably slowly built around Kokaniemi and, and uh, a Suzuki, but they're doing it fast. Dallas Stars, I don't think they have much of a choice but to keep on just doing what they're doing, bring in Heiskanen, in, hope this old core can hold, hold it together long enough to pull a cup out before they got to do a rebuild if they ever do one I don't know Los uh, they're they're close to it they get they got they're getting really long on the tooth Los Angeles Kings add 
this team is ready to add. They they can they can go look at. I heard they were looking at Schwartz. Great idea. Get uh, I like them going after Hamilton for that defense, even though it's pretty solid young defense as it is. But this is a team that's ready to blossom, as far as I'm concerned. And the best part about Los Angeles Kings is their biggest depth is up the middle. They could actually use a center to get wingers. And when you can do that, you've got so much power to bring a scorer that we've just mentioned a lot of these teams are needing. It's very difficult to find that that one shot, that big shot shooter, they, especially if they can play defensively at all. And they can use the center to go find one out there at, when, when the timing is right. This team is going to be exciting and it's ready to go. Vancouver Canucks. Weird situation. Great drafting team can't give contracts worth a darn. They've got too many bad contracts. It looks like they're talking about trading Besser because they have like guys like uh, Myers and Erickson and uh, oh, who else do they have there? Brandon Sutter, Nate Schmidt. They're trying to get rid of him maybe. I mean – it's it's a it's a beautiful thing. They got Horvat, uh, Hoglander, Peterson, um, H- Quinn Hughes, but they have a whole lot of crap in between. Very weird roster. What would I be doing? I'd be given a pick to get rid of uh, Erickson's contract. Uh, quit screwing around with, I wouldn't be screwing around with Vertanen anymore. He's obviously not going to grow up. And, uh, then I just keep on trying to add wingers and wingers and wingers and wingers and wing. Uh, and sorry, defensemen too. Winger defenseman, winger defenseman. As soon as you get room, picking the, some smart plays instead of giving big contracts to third and fourth line players and stuff like that. That's what I would be doing there. And I imagine that's hopefully what they're going to try to do. St. Louis Blues are borderline on a rebuild here. Um, I don't see this team being a contender now. They're on the downside. O'Reilly's only getting, not getting any younger. Um, they've got a defense with Krug and Falk that are pretty meh. Pretty meh. And they don't have much coming up in the pipeline to fill it in. Watch for St. Louis Blues and a rebuild. Winnipeg Jets, defense, defense, defense. Everybody knows it. I hear they're going after Alexiak. Good move. Add another defenseman. That team is a contender. They have one of the best goaltenders in the league, a Vesna winner, uh, Shifley, Connor, who's just getting better, amazing. Ehlers, um, Wheeler still is getting long in the tooth, but uh, solid. Cop, Lowry. Fantastic forwards there. Just need defense and they're going to be fine. New York Rangers is just on the cusp. Just on the cusp. Just wait for the breakthrough of these young kids. Kako, uh, Lafreniere, um, Heidel. Uh, Fox already had his break through one of the Norris. They got Miller. They got a couple good. uh, Schneider coming up on defense. This team is is really close to being a contender for a very long time. Uh, I think they just might add some veterans along the way to help the kids out. Anaheim, uh, Anaheim Ducks, terrible situation there. They um, are not really being afforded to have a long-term rebuild, but they're already in a fairly long-term rebuild as it is. I have a feeling ownership, the sponsorship and everything is like saying, you guys got to get good here right away or give us something. I have, I have a feeling they're in the Eichel sweepstakes. Grab Eichel and then build around him. That's something like that is really all they got. I I, I don't see this team being a, a contender for a very long time. Nashville, I think they got to rebuild this team. I, I just this core isn't working. It, it it didn't work. Duchesne, I hear they're going to offer a pick to Seattle to take Duchesne, which is good. But what are you going to do after that? Add another. You know, that gives you $8 million. You can add a couple players that are probably good depth guys, but they're going to have to win by committee. 
Um, they do have Saros, but I don't see a team that's a contender. And if they're as old as they are, Nashville is, is, is not a very young team and they're not a contender. I'm looking at rebuild. Uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, we'll see what Kekalainen does. I, I, the guy's a mad genius. Uh, it should be like a crash rebuild for the next five years. Something tells me that Kekalainen will have this team turned around in two years and you'll be going, how the hell did he do that? Um, Boston Bruins. They're going to, I think they have to add some veteran defensemen there and, and keep on going for it. Um, they wanted to give their youth some time to grow last year on D, and it was a, a veritable disaster. Uh, you can do that later. You got a small window here. Boston's window is like maybe two years. Bergeron's going to be super old by then. Krejci's going to be off the team. Uh, you know, you're going to have Marshawn and doesn't it look like DeBrusque is progressing very well. So go for it now. Like, why, why mess around? Go get uh, – I, I did a video where I thought that uh, Suter would be a very, really good for them. Hopefully Rask comes back or uh, the uh, hot shot kid they have there. Slay, uh, it's not Slavin. Swayman is as good as he was last year. That's going to be huge for them. Colorado Avalanche, win now, win now, win now. They'll sign Landis God. Don't worry about it. He's just going to play hardball with them. Um, got, when it, this Joe Sackick is this, what played in the league, and he seems to have a really good read on the fact that players don't like to leave the, the town that they're in, especially when they're on a cup-contending team. And he will set that number and say, look, you're not going to find a better team than this. And uh, we'll take care of you for the long term. And I bet you that's what he'll do. So if you want to leave, leave. That's a hot, and he's going to he's gonna roll the dice. And Landis Gog is probably going to sign it. And when they sign it, when he sign it, they're going to be like, I can't believe he got him for that little. This team is stacked. What would I do? Uh, just let the team grow. Maybe try to get uh, some cups, more cups in there like Saad was some go over to Tampa Bay, see if you can get a Coleman, guys like that that have won cups to help these guys grow into a serious warrior type team. Minnesota Wild, I hear they're in on Eichel. Uh, but with that buying out of uh, this is what I think that is what they they're good they have to do there and what they're doing, what Garen is doing is they're looking at this team being a true contender in about four or five years. Sign Kaprizov off, hopefully around 10 for eight year, 10 million for eight years, if you can get it at that. If they do make a trade for Eichel, you've got two superstars and you just keep on drafting, 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 picking up pieces for that fourth year when all of a sudden you got cap space like crazy and then boom, just flood that freaking team like Tampa Bay did. And you, you, you could have a uh, dynasty-level team when you do that. I think that's what Garen is doing there. Ottawa Senators, just keep on watching those young kids grow, man. That's what I would be doing. And just adding good, solid character veterans along the way to help these kids grow up to be the best that they can be. Carolina Hurricanes, this team's going to grow within the organization and be whatever they're going to be within that organization, which could be extremely good. Um, I like his. I like the philosophy of Don in there. Um, this year, I think they'll probably still be trying to look for a veteran goaltender to help Nedeljkovic out. But Nietzsche is going to be a year older. I love the guy. Svechnikov, a year older, looks like he's a beast. Aho, Selkie Trophy candidate already, number one center with as a, as a two way Selkie Trophy candidate. This lineup is just getting better and better and better. There's not much you have to do to it. And they still got Jarvis and a few guys. Gundler coming up. Like, wow, wealth of riches there in Carolina. Arizona, sad to watch, man. This team's going to be picking at the bottom for probably quite a few years here. Apparently, they're, even Darcy Kemper, they're looking to move. Uh, they can't seem to sign Garland. What are they going to have left? They're not going to have anything in that, uh, in that, on that team. Bottom dweller for quite a while and you might as well do it hopefully at the other side of it they're still in Arizona but 
I have my doubts. New Jersey Devils, um, I like the way they built this team, and I love what Fitzgerald is doing there in New Jersey. That pickup of Graves from Colorado for uh, Maltsev and uh, second-round pick is beautiful. Um, is uh, what was what was that guy? That name of oh, I always forget his name, but he's freaking. I think I really like him as a defenseman. Um, oh, that's Buffalo. Siegenthaler. Oh, nice move. I I don't think Fitzgerald has done made one wrong move so far. He got Kalkinen, uh from from Carolina. Um, he's there's uh. Jesper Bratt wasn't really his move, but everything he's touched has looked beautiful so far. And uh, I think that they're just going to add to the defense as much as they can. Watch out for New Jersey and Hamilton as a possibility there. If they do that, if they get Hamilton, this New Jersey team could be a contender a lot sooner than people think. There's a lot of great pieces there. Hughes, Iser, Bratt. Uh, Kalkinen, um, Sharon Govich, solid looking team for the future. Buffalo Sabres. Um, I think this team's going to be better than people think. I really like what Granado is doing with that team. Um, of course, you're going to have the Eichel trade. I really like the Eichel to Anaheim for Zegris. Apparently, they were given this year's first round pick and maybe another piece on top of it. Um, Trevor Zegras, if you're trying to change the character and energy of your team, Trevor Zegras is the guy you want. The guy in, on the junior Canadian team was such an amazing energy for that team. He has so much belief in himself and his team. He makes everybody around him better. Absolutely love him. He could be, a, I swear to God, like a an organization saver for a team. I would be all over that if you can pick them up. Uh, the Detroit Red Wings are just going to build this team exactly the way Stevie Y wants. And he, they've got all the window in the world to do it. He's just going to pick up picks after picks after picks um, until he thinks this team is stacked enough that they're like the Tampa Bay Lightning and then be a dynasty for probably 10 to 15 years. That's what I would do. Pretty easy to do when you have a brilliant mind like Stevie Eisenman. Although this last trade where he picked up uh, uh, Letty from the New York Islanders, and he, I don't understand that trade. Tell me in the comment section if you get it. Seattle Kraken are going to build this team slowly. I don't see them going after veterans and trying to be like Vegas or anything like that. They're going to, I believe they're going to pick up draft pick as many draft picks as they possibly can. They're in a market that doesn't need to be win now minded. It's they've got a lot of Canadian fans there, Canadian hockey fans right beside Vancouver and uh, um, Seattle has been a pretty good hockey town up until now. You don't hire Ron Francis if you're looking to be in a hurry to be good. I'll tell you that right now. He's known for his patience. He will be patient the way he's building this team, I believe. That's my full 42. Thanks for listening, everybody. Catch you on the next video and hopefully see you in my live. Okay, bye.